Shalom, everyone. This is Amir Tsarfati. I'm together with Pastor Bob Copney from East Anaheim, Southern California. And we're here. We're having a tour group. And you're probably asking yourself, isn't it dangerous in Israel? We so we've heard. So we came to clarify everything to you, not only about what's going on in Israel, but more so about what's going on all around in the Middle East and across the globe. This is a pandemic. There is no doubt about it. We are looking into the virus, uh, the coronavirus, way beyond China. It started in China, spread to Hong Kong, spread to Macau, spread to Taiwan, spread to uh, Japan. And what we're seeing right now is an outbreak in South Korea and, believe it or not, in Iran and in um, Italy. Of all places, I mean, you can see that it is not only about... Um, the Asian area, it's just spreading all around, by the way, from the numbers that I have, it is in America, it is actually in many of the states in America, it is in Canada, by the way, some of them uh, are from Iran made it to Canada, it is also elsewhere in Europe, and even, believe it or not, um, the Diamond Princess cruise ship uh, produced so many coronavirus-infected people. Uh, some of them were Israelis that were on that cruise ship, and Israel brought them, um, at least some of them, uh, back to Israel. And one of them um, is infected, is quarantined, is treated. Everything is good. No one so far in Israel has been infected in Israel by someone else, although... We had a, uh, a, a whole issue of a group of nearly 40 South Koreans that were in Israel up until a few days ago. Um, apparently, upon return in Singapore, when they landed in Singapore on the way to Korea, they were checked. And uh, it started with seven, then nine. And now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 19 of them were tested positive with coronavirus. And that, of course, caused the Israelis to immediately search everywhere they were in Israel. And so far, thank God, no one has been infected in Israel from the uh, Korean uh, groups. But all Korean tour groups right now in Israel are either quarantined or leaving Israel. And, um, and um, Israel issued a travel warning to South Korea. And just so you know, Pastor Bob, um, I showed it to you earlier. I want you to see uh, in South Korea, just so you know, February 18, which is what, five days ago? Mm -hmm. There were 31 cases. February 23, 23rd, today, 602. Wow. 31, 620 times within five days. That's an outbreak. I'm not even mentioning Northern Italy right now. North Italy, folks, it started with two, and now we are talking about um, 78 new cases in Italy at, on top of uh, the 112 cases in Lombardy, 27 in Veneto, nine in Ramgana, and six in Piedmont, and three in Rome. Italy... This, the, the rate that it's spreading in Italy is alarming. All public events, all soccer games, even the famous um, Carnival of Venice was uh, uh, canceled. And a whole hospital in the city of Padua, Padua or Padova is on a lockdown because of what is going on. Pastor Bob, I want you to come closer to me. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Pastor Bob, um, at any point, as the leader of the tour here with your people, have you felt any, I would say, um, panic or some issue here? Not even the slightest. In fact, the people that come with us to Israel are our best advocates for the next group to come because they come over and all the fears that any of them have ever had or their family have had are all put to rest. Uh, this is always one of the most peaceful places, I think, on Earth that you can be and uh, so not because of the coronavirus or anything else so i say if you're out there and you have a way to come to israel especially with this man come well, come <laughs> i'll pay you later <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is it's so calm and relaxed here that 
Pastor Bob doesn't even know that 21 rockets were fired from what, Gaza. What? 21 <laughs> rockets were no, fired from Gaza a, an hour ago towards the, the area around Gaza. Um, Hamas and Islamic Jihad, they're angry. You know why they're angry? Let me tell you why they're angry. They sent two terrorists this morning to put a bomb next to the Israeli border with Gaza. Israel shot them. And Israel decided to keep the bodies of the terrorists. Oh. You know why? Because Hamas is keeping bodies of our soldiers. So we decided, why don't we just kick them out, all those who come to take the dead bodies and get the dead bodies. They're angry that we keep the bodies of their terrorists that just came to put a bomb on our, on our border. And so they decided to throw 21 rockets. Nothing happened. Nothing got hit. We intercepted most of them, as always. It's almost like a weekly thing. They try to embarrass Netanyahu right before the elections. Mm. They try to make him look weak, make him look, uh, you know. And the funny thing of all, they waited for the Qatari envoy who just brought suitcases of money from Qatar to leave. <laughs> so he brought the money, he left, and uh, that's it. Pastor Bob. Um, we're talking about coronavirus, and we we estimate we did the math together. We realized that there's about about three percent of the people that are um, infected that are dying. Right. We also looked into the age. Most of those who die are anything from 65, 70, and above. And above, right? And about. In other words, any any person who, in fact, there's no death of 10 years old and below. So we're not talking about something that if you catch it, instantly you die. However, you told me today something very interesting. You said, Amir, that reminds me of something that the Bible speaks of the tribulation period. Am yes. I right? Yes. So I had a friend who used to attend our church and now lives in the Philippines just recently write me when he is obviously seeing the news like so many of us are about the coronavirus spreading. And he said, Pastor Bob, do you think this is related to the uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse? And he's referring to a passage in Revelation 6 where we know that many, many people are going to die. And I want to share that passage with you uh, because I think a lot of people have that question. Is this one of those plagues that are coming on the world? world. Here's what John saw and said when he is recording the things that the Lord revealed to him. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, come and see. So I looked and behold a pale horse and the name of him who sat on him was death and Hades followed with him and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth. Imagine that 25% of the earth to kill with sword and hunger with death and by the beasts of the earth. And so he was wondering, is this that? And of course, I immediately wrote to him and said, oh, well, there's no way that what's going on right now is that because according to scripture, the church is not going to be here by exactly. Revelation chapter six. We're going to be in heaven. And so that's going to happen after the church is gone. But one thing that I think is fascinating as believers, although we're concerned for the spread of this disease, and obviously we should be praying for the sick and praying for those that have lost loved ones, uh, is this, that we're seeing a mechanism right now in our day that could potentially continue to infect the world and take thousands, if not millions of lives. And so while we're praying that won't happen, we know that this is not Revelation 6, but we're living in an age where even modern medicine with all of its advances really doesn't know how to stop it, at least at this point. And so in the Great Tribulation, God is going to use death pestilence in some translations, which could be a disease just like this that'll run pandemic over the whole earth. Yeah, it's super important because a lot of believers are confusing the four horsemen as, as if it's the time when we live right now. Right. Chapter six of Revelation, as you said, takes place after chapter four. Right. <laughs> chapter four, verse one is when John is called up to heaven, which is also, I, we believe, we do the rapture of the church. He hears and, a trumpet that says, come exactly. up here, come up. immediately he's in the spirit. Exactly. So, yeah. so again, I hold the opinion, just like you, that we're not yet in that scenario, but God is allowing us as believers to see or to taste or to see a, a foretaste of yeah. that which the world is going to go through. But I also believe there's another 
hidden agenda here, not from the side of God, but from the side of the perpetrators of this whole thing, because I honestly believe with all of my heart, and I've said that even 10 days ago when I gave the first update on the coronavirus. And a lot of people criticize me for that. But again, I am standing behind my words. I believe that the coronavirus is a man-made biological warfare produced in the Wuhan uh, laboratories. And the question that is remaining right now is not if it was from there, is how did it go out? Right. and who did it and why so there are so many uh, uh people that are asking that some um theories are that uh, it was tested on animals mm. and uh somebody took one of the animals to the market to sell it mm. it's not the first time that people sold animals to make some money from that others say that it was actually something that was um infecting money mm. bills and because where was it in the market yeah. and and by the way that plays very well into the world plan to move to a cashless uh, uh system yeah. because hey if a virus can stay for on a surface for eight hours or by the way some say up to eight days wow. then who would like to even touch yeah. a bill of a one dollar or whatever it is and therefore there will be a great push for that and uh others suggest that uh, you know the funny thing i heard today the iranians said that president trump sent coronavirus <laughs> they, they, he sent Blame the corona trump, well. he sent the coronavirus to iran although we all know it's not true but let's talk first i mean this update to begin with when I promoted it, was the coronavirus in the Middle East. Mm. Pastor Bob, Iran has been trying for the longest time to create what we call the Shiite axis, all the way from Tehran via Iraq, via Syria, all the way to Lebanon, creating that crescent. And, and, and we tried to battle it with what? With killing Soleimani, with F-16 raids with tanks with helicopters with bombs with whatever and comes a tiny little microscopic virus and does that job better than all <laughs> how iran is afflicted right now with the coronavirus right. the city of Qom, which is the holy city for shiites in iran is the center of the outbreak in fact, one lady that just returned from Qom to Beirut, Lebanon, brought with her the coronavirus. She's the first case in Lebanon. And the Lebanese are so angry that the Iranians continue to bless them, this time with the virus. But that's not the first case. Another gentleman, Iraqi, who came from Qom to Iraq, brought the coronavirus. And guess what? Kuwaitis feel the same. Turkey feels the same. And if you thought that the President Trump's uh, um, sanctions isolated Iran, then let me tell you, Turkey sealed the border with Iran. Iraq sealed the border with Iran. Kuwait sealed the border with Iran. Lebanon said, we don't want anybody from Iran. And I just learned an hour ago that anyone who comes to Gaza, the Palestinians, are saying anyone who comes from Iran, up until now it was anyone who comes from China, anyone who comes from Iran has to be quarantined. We don't want him to, to even come near us. What? What? <laughs> what world pressure and sanctions and tanks and assassinations could not do a little virus. By the way, there were e elections for the parliament in Iran for the legislative uh, council two days ago, and uh, they just pr produced the, num the numbers of how many people showed up, 42%, where four years ago, 60 to 63%. Drop of 23%, and we're not sure if it's the coronavirus or it's the apathy, but one thing is for sure, Iran is in a very yeah. terrible shape. Two, by the way, of the infected people are two newly elected members of the parliament. Yeah, exactly. Quite well. Wow amazing the outbreak in iran is concerning a lot of people why because 
look, you know everything that happens in Israel. We know of that one Korean group. We know about that one person that came from the Diamond uh, Princess. The problem with China and Iran is that the regime is not giving us the truth. So you don't know how to, exactly. you know, what to do with that. The regime in Iran says everything is fine while the numbers are staggering. In fact, just today alone in one city, 20 people died. Hmm. Now, they, the numbers that you will read right now are that Iran has only eight. I received, I received a text from a lady that lives in that town. And, uh, you know, I, I always have to verify those things. And I, I can tell you one thing, this text in both in, in Arabic, in, last night, 20 people died of shortness of breath in Bandar Anzali. By the way, shortness of breath, this is how this virus works. In Bandar, Bandar Anzali, Iran, but the outlaw Islamic regime won't publish the news. For your information, Iran is ranked number two in coronavirus outbreak. Wow. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, from Iran, it came to Canada just a few hours ago. I learned that Iranians that came to Canada brought it with them as well. This is a pandemic. It is. It's not deadly in a way that it's killing any person that got it, but it spreads faster than anything I can imagine. And I know it's a lab made uh, also because uh, the president of China a few days ago uh, said we must do something about it to stop it. And then a few hours later, I want to show you something. A few hours later, the minister in, in, a, in a, the ministry, the, the minister of science and technology released a new directive entitled instructions on strengthening biosecurity management in microbiology labs that handle advanced viruses like the novel coronavirus. And you know, there's only one lab in, in entire China that is dealing with these viruses. Where is it? Wuhan. In Wuhan. Yeah. So they don't even understand that they are telling us that they know it came from there. And now they want to make sure things like that won't happen again. The numbers in China are staggering. The bodies are piled up there. They brought new. If the five crematoriums in Wuhan were not enough, they brought new ones, mobile ones. Right. And now they they are burning 10 times more than they, they did before. We'll never know the number um, because we are dealing with the a regime. But one thing we know, we after all of this, should not be scared. <laughs> I know, I know, I know with all the drama, look, I'm giving you numbers, I'm giving you facts, I'm giving you yeah. all the data, but I think that we need to stop and think about us, the believers, and on the world, the non-believing world. And this is where I really want you, Pastor Bob, to, to tackle that one. I mean, should believers, be afraid of the coronavirus? Absolutely not. But I'm glad Amir asked because I think as Christians, we really want to know, Lord, how do you want us to respond? And we can make two huge mistakes. One is being apathetic about it, thinking it's really too bad, but it's not happening in my neighborhood. And uh, sorry for the rest of the world. Obviously, that's not what the Lord wants. He wants us to have compassion. These people that are infected, these people that are dying, many of them don't know our Savior. The Bible says God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And so clearly he grieves them passing this life. So we should be praying for their families. We should be praying uh, for those people that are who have lost loved ones. But when it comes to ourselves, the other mistake we can make is really to think, oh, no, well, what's going around the world, it's probably going to come here next. And Amir has just shared a lot of facts about the reality that we're not really being told the truth right now, probably. The truth will come out later as to how extensive this virus is. And the fact is it could well spread throughout much of the rest of the world, and none of us are really immune. So what does God want us to do when there's something out there that's killing people and could come our way? And I think this is a time for us as believers, for our faith to shine because we can die too, we're, we're subject to dying. And, and uh, you know, so on the one hand, we shouldn't be fearful, 
God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. So if we have a spirit of fear, that's not from the Lord. But he also doesn't want us to be foolish. We need to take precautions. I told them here, you know, I believe in the Lord and I trust the Lord, but I look both ways when I cross the street. And, and I think that in the same way as believers, we need to, to be wise about our interactions and our, our own health. And so I'm, I've been thinking about this whole issue. You know, Satan uses fear. In fact, I like to say Satan's uh, weapon of mass deception is fear. And so his desire, it could be the coronavirus, it could be something else in your life. He wants to grip you with that because ultimately the Bible says every man has an instinctive fear of death. And that really is at the heart of this thing. What if I were to catch the disease from this person or that person or in, you know, at work? Or, or at church or, or, or at an airport or at a hospital. And so I want to encourage you, if you're a believer in Christ, to remember some things you probably already know, but to believe them. God gives us in the Word of God what I'll call his antidotes for fear. The first is the presence of God. And you probably know this because in Psalm 23, remember, David wrote this. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. But the reason was, thou art with me. The presence of God is always the answer for any fear that we have. Amen. The second thing, though, that we have is in the scriptures, we have God's, uh, not only his presence, but his promises. And I want to share a passage with you from Psalm 91. Listen to this. This. this is a great passage. If you're a Christian, this is me and you. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. And listen to what he says. Surely he shall deliver you from the snares of the fowler, from the perilous pestilence that means disease mm. and he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge his truth shall be your shield and buckler and you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the coronavirus okay it doesn't say that but it says nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness exactly. nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday and then i love this a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near Amen. you. And so the idea isn't that Christians can't die or can't get sick, but it is this, that we don't have to live in fear of death anymore because the Lord came not only to deal with our sins so that we wouldn't go to hell, but he actually came to deal with our fear of death. Mm. So, I mean, if it's okay, I'd like to share a passage of scripture. Yes. I, I think every Christian should know. It's Hebrews 2, verses yes. 14 and 15. Let me... Uh, let me uh, uh... Put that scripture on the screen for all of us. So there you go. Hebrews 2, 14 to 15. Will, will you read it for me? Yes, of course. course. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil and release those who through fear of death were all, all their lifetime subject to bondage. Wow. So did you catch that? Jesus Christ came in part to actually experience death for us so he could relate to us as our high priest. One of the fears that's instinctive to all men is to die, to actually physically go through this uncertain experience. Jesus went before us in part to render uh, the the devil's power over that, uh, it, impossible to have a grip on us. And so if we're afraid as believers of dying, whether it's coronavirus or cancer or, or anything else, the Lord Jesus wants to give us power over Amen. that fear. You see, the idea is this, that as believers, greater is he who is in us than anything that's in the world, anything that Satan can do to us. I love this true story. There was a, a Christian tribal group that uh, the the old tribe had come to Christ, and there was a major earthquake. They lived in huts. They were pretty primitive. And uh, there was this one woman. She was an elderly woman who was a godly old woman. They just called her Mama. And when this earthquake happened, it was pretty extensive damage. And one of the young natives was worried about Mama. So he ran to her hut to see if she was even okay, if she got hurt. And he found her there, and she was crying. 
but she had a smile on her face. And he said, mom, are, are you okay? And she said, I'm fine. He said, well, why are you crying? She said, well, I'm just glad that I have a God big enough to shake the whole world. Mm. And that ought to be our experience. When we see things happening, we realize, God, you are sovereign. Even though I, it might seem out of control to me and to the rest of the world, it's not. Remember when Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, this is Isaiah 6.1, King Uzziah was the, one of the best kings that had lived, and he had reigned for 50-some years, but he died. Whenever a good king died, you did not know what was coming. And so he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. In other words, even though the throne of Israel at that time was vacant, the throne of heaven is never vacant. And that's what we need to remember. When things look like they're out of control— like when you're on an amusement park ride and they seem to be out of control, they're not. And God's, you know, I had our congregation sing last Sunday after I, I shared some things about this. He's got the whole world in his hands. Remember that old song? We sang, he's yes. got the, I said, he's got the coronavirus in his hand. I made everybody sing it. He's got this under control. He yes. can handle it. This is not the, this is not the way the world's going to be destroyed. You know, some of us are older. We grew up in the 60s and the 70s. Uh, in my day, the big fear wasn't the coronavirus. The big fear was uh, pollution, air pollution and overpopulation. The world's going to end because of pollution. That's what they said. And they, they fed us this line and the media loved to do it. Well, that went away. And, and then by the end of the last century, do you remember Y2K, most of you? Well, the whole world's going to fall apart. I remember everybody was running around on December 30. Survival for, kits and all of that. It was crazy. And even Christians got into it. We were just adding to the fear. And Christians aren't to live like that in fear of what's going to happen next. We should live in faith of what we know is coming, but we shouldn't worry about the things that come along the way. My point is this, for you as a believer, you don't need to be afraid. God knows what's happening. He's got control of it. And this is your time to shine. When the world gets dark... Yes. You, you intensify your brightness yes. to a lost world who needs answers. Yes. I am so glad that you said that, Pastor Bob, because I always tell people when the world is going through crisis, it's time for the believers to shine. The, be, Jesus said about us, you are the light of the world. And when can light shine if not in the dark, if not in the confusion? I love quoting Jeremiah 17 regarding that you know when when there's drought year and when there is heat wave you know if you trust the lord then you will bear fruit then your leaves will be green and the idea is in times of trouble non-believers are going to look at you that's right and your faith will be tested that's right then and if they see a panicky person, if, if they see someone who completely lose it and, 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 and lives in fear and lives in, then they're going to ask themselves, if this guy who is a great believer in God is so afraid, how much more we should? Yeah. And what is this whole piece of God that surpasses all understanding? You do, you've been trying to sell me all those years and, and that you don't really have in you. In, in times like that and you know I'm I'm thinking about we were on the Sea of Galilee the other day which was so pretty it was amazing uh, amazing by the way Sea of Galilee is less than one meter to its highest level unbelievable wow. but the thing is we established that Jesus never said to the disciples let's try to go to the other side or let's pray that we'll make it to the other side no, he said, let's go to the other side. And, you know, Christianity is not the absence of problems and troubles and trials, but it's the presence of Christ. That's what it's all about. And we have to remember that, you know, Pastor Bob, things will get worse. And by the way, coronavirus is just one dot on a long list of events That's that right. we are about to experience. Yes. And hopefully not for too long because we want to be out of here. Um, but the world is going to see some major plagues, major earthquakes, major pestilences. I mean, what you just quoted from, from Revelation 6, a quarter of the yeah. population of the world, which is, what, what is it today? About 2 billion, 8 no, billion. 8 billion, oh, a quarter. Billion. You're talking about 2 billion people die. You know, 
even in the highest number of coronavirus death right now, I mean, now they talk almost 8,000. I believe it's probably 80,000, maybe more, maybe even 100,000. But it's nothing compared yeah. to what? Two yeah. billion if it happened today. Yeah. We need to understand that whether it's man-made, which I believe it is or not, and whether it's going to kill millions or not, it's still nothing compares to what the tribulation period will go, will, will will be uh, experiencing. Um, the world is going to be experiencing in that time. And there's only one one way for a person to escape the time of the tribulation. That's right. That's right. We want to talk a little bit about that because kind of want to say this since we really are confident this is not the end of the world this is not revelation 6 8 and the destruction of the world um, it is a time when many people are afraid and it is a time for us as christians to remember who's in charge yes it's a time for us to really have a, a peace that passes understanding because it makes sense for people to be frightened and it could get worse before it gets better we don't know what god's going to allow but may I, I almost want to just prophesy and tell you, this is not the end any more than climate change is going to destroy our world in 12 years. That's not true. We know what the scriptures have to say. So as believers, we, we should be different than the world around us. And before this virus, uh, before a vaccine is, is approved by the United States and, and uh, uh, you know, they're working on one right now as we speak and before it's distributed and before this a fear is gone. Now's the time to believe the promises of God for Amen. yourself and really believe them and yes. share them with your family and your friends mm. and especially the believers that the Bible says to build yourself up on your most holy faith. How do we do that? Through God's word, yes. through God's presence, through God's promises, yes. and really through the power of Jesus Christ with his victory over sin yes. and death. But it's also a time to redeem this, to share the faith. You know, Paul said, knowing that the days are evil, make the most of the opportunity. Redeem the time. Strike while the iron's hot. Well, the iron's hot right now. You got lots of your neighbors and people who are talking about this. And what this has to do with is not just a disease. It has to do with mortality. This is a time when people are thinking about death and, and their own life and protecting it. And you as a believer have great opportunity to talk to them about why you have a peace and why they can have a peace regardless of what happens in their life. Remember what Jesus said, don't fear him who can kill the body. You say, well, that's pretty scary. He said, fear him who can throw body and soul into hell. Yes. In other words, we're to have a fear of God who's going to not only decide when we die, but really our eternity. This is about our eternal destiny. So use this as an opportunity to share your faith. Yes. And if you're listening and you don't know where you stand with the living God, maybe you've, you're religious or, or maybe you're an atheist or maybe you're not sure about the Bible. Let me give you just three simple steps that I believe are right from Scripture to settle the issue between you and the Lord. And if you're a believer, let me encourage you to jot these down or to remember them. They're not hard to remember. They're called the ABCs of salvation. That's all you have to remember, A, B, C. A, you need to admit you're a sinner. It starts there. Yeah, the word sin just means to miss the mark. Listen, you don't need to be good to go to heaven. You don't need to be better to go to heaven. You don't need to be perfect to be saved. You just need to be honest. You need to admit that you have failed God's standard which is perfection. Yes. I've never had a single person who argued with me that they were perfect, that they never sinned. Plenty who think they're better than the guy next door. But none of us have lived our lives without sin. And the Bible clearly says that the wages of sin is death. That's and a deadly all, virus. That, that's exactly right. That's the deadliest virus. That's exactly right. Yes. The fear of man is that they might catch a virus and then they might die. Guess what? You, the already entire, have. you already have. That's exactly right. The entire world is infected with a virus that is absolutely fatal, not just physically, but eternally. That's really true. That's what the Bible says about sin. There is a vaccine, and that's this gospel that we're trying to the share. The gospel. <laughs> Love it. So, A, you admit you're a sinner. That's not usually very hard for people. The second one's a little trickier, though. It's B, and that's to believe to believe that Jesus Christ was crucified 
for your sin. He died for your sin even before you were born. And he was buried, according to the scriptures, and he rose again the third day to prove that God had raised him from the dead and accepted his sacrifice in place of your own death and eternal, eternal death. And so that second one, to believe that that's true. But I want to say a word to you because I found so many people stumble right here. They say, well, Pastor Bob, I, I believe, I've always believed, I go to church. What they usually mean is they believe in God or they believe that Jesus was the son of God and that those things really happened that I just mentioned. You know, the demons believe those things. They know those things are true, but they're not saved. There's a difference in saving faith than just saying, I believe those things to be true. Let me give you an example. If I say, I believe in UFOs, what I'm saying is I believe they exist. I believe they're real. And most people, when they say they believe in Jesus, that's what they mean. They believe Jesus was God's son. They believe he died on the cross historically. That is not saving faith. The second way we use the word believe, at least in English, is we talk about putting our confidence in someone. If I had to have surgery and my doctor says, if you don't have it, you're going to die. And it's a tricky surgery. And I said, doctor, I want you to do my surgery because I believe in you. I'm not saying I believe he exists. That's obvious. I'm saying I trust him with my very Amen. life. Yes. That's what it means to put your faith in Jesus Christ to say, God, I know I'm a sinner. My only hope is your son. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to trust him for my salvation. From now on, he's going to be not just my savior, but the Lord of my life. So I said it was ABC, right? A, admit you're a sinner. B, believe on Jesus Christ. Give your faith to, in God to, to the work that Christ has done on the cross personally. And then C is how you do it. It's the word confess. Because the Bible says in Romans, we're to confess with our mouth that Amen. Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart, God raised him from the dead. And here's the promise, you shall be saved. It's yes. not hard to remember that. A, B, C, admit you're a sinner, believe personally on Jesus Christ, confess with your mouth. Jesus said, those who confess me before men, I'll confess before my Father Amen. who is in heaven. So that's my prayer, is that you have already done that, or you're willing to do it now, and that you share it with your friends who don't know the Lord. Yes, wow. Look. I can stand here for hours and talk about world events and Middle East events, and I can talk about America and Israel, Netanyahu and Trump. This is nonsense compares to the knowledge of Christ. And Netanyahu will not lead you to Christ. Trump will not lead you to no. Christ. Congress will not lead you to Christ. The U.S. Army will not lead you to Christ. The IDF will not lead you to Christ. Governments will not lead you to Christ. It is obeying the Holy Spirit, and it's, as you said, acknowledging our sinful nature, believing yes. in Christ, and confessing uh, that we need him, uh, confessing our sins, of course. But it's so important that you said that because we are ahead. Uh, I believe we're going to see dark days yes. ahead of us. And I'm not a doom and gloom person. I'm not holding on to those dark days, but I will tell you, they're coming. I'm holding on to my blessed hope, <laughs> my blessed hope. I'm rejoicing whenever those things happen. I'm not sitting at home, locking myself in, you know, behind closed doors and, 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 and shivering and, 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 you know, you know, panicking. No, I feel even more uh, uh, urged to share more urge to teach, more urge to travel and teach. I mean, people tell me, are you planning on traveling now with all that is going on? I said, uh-huh, <laughs> now it's the time for me. Now, I'm not going to be careless. I will, you know, I will not go to this, you know, places where I know it's it's going to be dangerous for me. But I, I, I know my days are in his hands. And I also know that more than ever before, now is the time to share the word. In fact, this is why I want to invite you and anyone that you can invite with you to come exactly a week from today. I'll be in Miami to share less than a week from today, six days. I'll be in Miami to share in a awaiting his return conference. We still have about two to three hundred seats available if you want. On May 23rd, we have a waiting his return conference in um, uh, in um, Vancouver, Canada, May 30th, Dallas, Fort Worth. We're almost sold out that one. 
and uh, we've got more to come um, along the year. Listen, these are great times for the believers to stand strong, stand Amen. firm, right. study the word. Hold the biggest. My biggest concern is that believers are going away and away and away and away from the word of God. Yes. Yes. And I'm telling you, I've seen. Well, they love sensationalism. They love mm -hmm. some big names that are giving them some, you know, their own things. You know, the word of God. This is the most important thing. That's what we are abandoning right now. And that's why we go to so many weird directions. Um, I'm super excited because my book is coming out in a few days. Yeah. Just a minute. Whoa. There you go. So, <laughs> and it's called The Day Approaching. The Day Approaching. Our day to go with the Lord. And it comes with a little study guide that you can go and study together uh, with your friends um, um, at home or wherever. My other book, 100,000 of them already sold, wow. The Last Hour. Uh, this is a great book that if you want, you can get it on our website. This is not for making money. I don't make money here. This is not about that. We want to... Uh, open the eyes of people to understand the times and the seasons in which we live. That's what it's all about. And by the way, half of the books are, are quotes of, from the Bible because we, we want to send people back to the Word of God. That's the most important thing. I want to encourage you. Thank you, by the way. We made it to 200,000 subscribers on YouTube uh, a few days ago. Thank you. And... Uh, Twitter, Behold Israel, Instagram, one word, Behold Israel, and YouTube and Facebook, Behold Israel. Pastor Bob, before I say the ironic blessing, would you maybe pray with those that might want to accept Christ today? Absolutely. One um, and uh, maybe throughout this broadcast or from what they are going to watch later on on, on YouTube, they might get to the point where they really need to make that decision. So yes. you lead them uh, into in that prayer, and then we'll conclude with the I want to bless. So let me encourage you to pray this. If you have never received Christ, or if you say, I don't know if I have, I don't know if I'm a Christian, I don't know if I'm born again, the Bible says, make your calling and your election, his choice of you, sure. You say, how do I do that? This is a great way. Just pray this prayer after me, would you? Dear Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die in my place. I'm a sinner. I admit that. And Jesus, you are my savior. I need you to come into my life to forgive me of my sin right now, to cleanse me and to change me from the inside mm. and to make me born again. I don't want to be afraid of death. I don't want to be afraid of hell. I don't want to live in fear anymore. So come give me the Holy Spirit. Write my name in your book of life and change me from the inside out for your glory. I want to live for you from now on until you come back for me. Thank you. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. 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 I want to invite you to this beautiful country. The enemy is trying to scare you from coming. The coronavirus is one more thing. Um, we just had a few, at least one person that accepted the Lord on this. That's tour right. And uh, got baptized. That's right. This is amazing. Guys, the enemy wants you to fear. God wants to bless you when you're here. Um, let me conclude it with the Aaronic blessing in Hebrew. Yevarechecha Adonai v'ishmerecha. Ya'er Adonai pana velecha v'ichuneka. Isa Adonai pana velecha v'yasem lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you his peace, his shalom. That wonderful peace that surpasses all understanding that can only come from the prince of peace who is the lord of peace that can give you that peace now and forever here and everywhere and his name is yeshua jesus 
our salvation. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. 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 Right. Pastor Bob, thank you, you so much for our friendship and uh, for being so um, loyal to uh, bring people to Israel, not just with me, but to, to this country, uh, being a good friend in good times and bad times. I've known you for almost 20 years it's now. It's been a long time. And uh, I'm always uh, at home when I come to Calvary Chapel of East Anaheim, and uh, I'm definitely going to be there again. Guys, um, subscribe to our newsletter on our website, beholdisrael.org. And uh, we love you, and we pray that the uh, God of peace will keep you uh, always in perfect peace. Amen. God bless you. God and bless. shalom from Jerusalem. Wow. City of the Great King. <laughs> God bless you guys.